Hey guys, it's Chris. Um, in this video, I'd like to just run through how I build this material in Substance Designer. So, I started by making this tile sampler. Basically, just used a square pattern and just rotate that 45 degree. And then I just duplicate that and change the global offset to this one. Change the global offset to one uh, to 0.5. So. And then I got this blend with this basic diamond shape. And then from here, I just start to add some value by using the bevel node. So it's quite um, sharp. So I just add a, a blur high quality. Um, <coughs> from here, um, I just start to, because uh, this is too dark um, to start with. So I just use the hexagram range to add the level, and here um, from he from this node, uh, I just add a distance. As you can see, there's a bit of value here as well, and then I use the a blur to blend with this um, with this shape to have something like this. And before we continue with this node, I'm gonna go through the stuff on the top. So here, uh, still from this one, uh, as you can see, here's the blurred white space. And then I just use um, the, the histogram scan non-uniform. So you can make this uh, white space um, to something like this, just this white, little white dot, which will be the nail for this material. And I just add a bit of bevel and I turn on turn up the smoothing just so uh, the bevel doesn't look too sharp and from here um, I just add another level so that the dark area is uh, quite um, tiny uh, and for this histogram range which I just sort of balance the value and then I got this blend uh, as you can see here and finally I just add this um, transformation 2d um, because this nail shape is generated from this white space, which is from here. So I had to just um, sort of change the position to make sure this is right in the center of this cross line. And from here, um, the nail is the only part where it shows them the metalness. So I just need to create this mask here um, by using the hexagram scan. Um, and then I just blur that a little bit because I don't want to have a like a sharp edge here so I just made a two masks one is for uh, to cover everything else one is for cover um, the nail shape as you can see I connected this mask with a lot of nodes here uh, which you will see later from here I just start to create the shading behind this nail um, so first of all, I just duplicate this node, the histogram scan now uniform. I just made the shape smaller. From here, I just add this inverse scale and add this um, blur high quality. Sorry, zoom this out. Add this blur high quality and um, and then in, and you can see in the final blend, which is something like this. And then. So I just use this uh, save transformation um, to offset the position, just just same as this transformation 2D. Um, they're just doing exactly the same thing. And then, um, as you can see in this one, the shading is not good enough because even as a basic shading here, I still want to add some extra detail, especially this folding effect. So. Um, based on this basic diamond shape, I just add another distance node and then I just blur that out and from here add another um, a blur node which is um, from from this one and then, then I just reposition that and add a level to make the shape bigger and then I just use the screen to sort of kill some of the values in the center blur that out a little bit more and invert at the level to make the shape bigger and 
add a, a bit of extra blur and then just use the add linear dodge I can create something like this blur that out even more um, which is sort of um, adds a bit of extra detail and then um, I just use at uh, the blend um, so I just blend this shape with this one as you can see here and uh, let's let's have a look at this blend so on top of this one I just add uh, the nail shape which is from which is from right from here um, the third blend is is this okay as you can see I added some extra value for this edge for this edge um, so this one is from from here the inner shadow so because I so it's just want to sort of um, make this bit of darker so I just add another so instead of using distance I just add a bevel from this diamond shape and then I just uh, blur that out and add it into this blend and finally the final shading before I start at the extra detail is this sort of uh, folding effect here uh, which is this group um, so in this here I just add this um, histogram skin uh, from from this blurred shape here and then I just uh, use the non-uniform blur and add a bit of um, add the, the purling noise to make the shape looks a little bit random and sort of randomize the value here and from here I just use another mask from from here from this from the from this tile sampler uh, which is perfect mask for this one and then I just add this uh, uniform color um, for the background and the foreground is this so so because if you have a look at this reference picture um, this is why I add this shading here so just to add this sort of folding effect around here um, and then after this blend I just add a bit of bevel to make the this bit darker and blur that out a little bit and from here I just add this as you can see this is the final blend base shape here from here to get to this point as you can see everything happens around here to sort of keep this graph kind of uh, tidy I just um, add another subgraph here and this is the graph just for this wrinkle here so I started by using this shape node and I just changed uh, using this basic shape and um, change the size of the X to create a shape like that and then I just add another shape um, and I blur that out a little bit and just add this into the directional warp from here I just add this transformation 2D uh, just to play around with the shape and then I use the mirror to get it something like this and uh, because if you see this rancor here this line is sort of fading away um, so I just add a gradient linear um, to sort of kill a bit of value on top and then from here I just put, um, put them in in the splatter circular so I just duplicate another one so one has the long uh, like bigger size one has a shorter size as you can see here um, I just randomize the size play play around with the size a little bit uh, and randomize the scale as well and I did exactly the same thing here um, sorry uh, uh, for, the, for this bigger size a uh, bigger bigger shape because this is the bigger shape uh, it will be more visible than this shorter one so to make this a little bit more natural I just add a bit of um, slope blur uh, just to add up some extra shape here to, to make sure it doesn't look too rigid and straight um, and from here I just blurred that one and I blurred that one the, the short the, the small size as well and then I just blend them together to look like that and I invert the shape and also I, I made another blend without this um, blur high quality which is quite sharp 
So, and I did the, the invert and the blur that just a little bit, not as strong as that one. So when I blend the sharp shape and the blur shape together, which add a little bit more depth to this uh, wrinkle here. And then I just add a, a height output. Um, so before I, um, so, so after I've done that, um, which is the shape for this wrinkle, before I could move on to the material, I just add, sorry, I just uh, exposed some, some of these parameters here from the splatter circular. Um, so especially the pattern amount, size, uh, and the position, which is the angle of uh, these lines, and also the, 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 ran the size randomized. So, so I add this node uh, in this graph, and then you can see um, by playing around with these parameters, uh, each rankles looks different. So here I, um, I duplicate, because the, the, the position should, should be exactly the same. Uh, I just duplicate these two and bring this the, the tail samplers here. And all I had to do is just play around with the size so they sort of match to the material. Um, I blend the first uh, the first one with uh, with this one, with this blend, which is the, the base shape blend. Um, and then I blend the second one uh, with the one on the top. And finally, to, to make this um, Renko looks a little bit stronger and more uh, natural. I just duplicate these uh, nodes and um, change this shape again. And on top of that, I just uh, add a bit of extra blur and add on top of this one. So you can see the difference. It gives a little bit stronger um, depth and um, you can feel the sort of it's quite deep which is going to create this deep shape here and then um, for this final blend um, I just add this um, level from from this blurred note here and I just added this blend uh, with the at the nail mask here and then I blur them all and blend them with this final shape. So from here to here. After I've done this basic shape I just uh, start to create all these leather textures and damage effects um, and by doing that I start with the <coughs> sorry I start with the, this leather surface I started with this dirt node and then edit that into warp by using this purlin noise. So you can see uh, it's a little bit randomized. And then I use a splatter node uh, to create something like this. Uh, you just have to play around, especially the size, width, and height, and rotation, and also this uh, disorder angle. Just to sort of randomize the shape, I just put this straight into this um, this bevel. So let me just um, make another bevel, just so you can see what it, what this looks like um, in the grayscale. So as you can see, it's sort of uh, create. Uh, these these noise and which is sort of quite similar to the um, um, the leather textures um, so with this bevel I added this to because because when I just chuck this into the uh, normal node it looks it's like the other way around so I just had to add a, a, no, a normal invert node and the blend uh, I use a normal blend to blend um, this leather texture with this basic sh uh, the base shape here so with with this one and this one and this is the the blend with the with the um the micro detail here and then from here i start to create this larger uh, leather texture 
by doing that, I started with this uh, this sales node, this edge detect, and then I just add this warp here. I just add another blend with this cloud node. So there's some sort of uh, black and white and gray value here, and then I just add another bevel to kill some of the the edge here. And also I just add another slow blur to sort of randomize this edge a little bit more. I, I just duplicate this whole, all these nodes uh, and add a bit of extra uh, blend. Because this is for, this, this part is for the larger damage here. So as you can see, um, the scale for this one is 41 and this one is 75. Because I want to create this um, edge wear effect. So what I did, once I done with this um, larger texture shape, if you want to use this edge wear effect, you have to uh, have the curvature node. By having the curvature node, you need the normal node. So invert that, invert, basically invert this mask. Oh yeah, so from here, I just add another directional warp. Um, the reason is I don't want all these uh, damage lines to connect to each other because all these are individual pieces of fabric. So these lines are not supposed to cross. So by doing that, I just add this, this shape as the directional warp uh, intensity um, for the, uh, for, sorry, for this one. Um, so, so now, so just sort of randomize this edge a little bit more. And then from here, um, I just add this mask to mask out uh, this bit. And then I just blend this one with everything else, as you can see here. And then I just add a little bit of distance. It kills some extra edge, but sort of gives a bit of extra value for uh, for the thick ones. So I just blend this one with this distance to have something like that. Uh, I just blurred the whole thing a little bit more. And from here, um, I just want to create this, I want to create a little bit more depth for this damage value here. So I just add a, this high pass grayscale because uh, all I want is to have this type of effect. So you can see um, the space in the middle is kind of uh, gray. Um, and I have this dark edge line here, which is quite nice. And then I just create this mask to mask out uh, everything else that I don't need to have a, some sort of effect like that. And then everything from this group comes to this node. Before I move on to the, these texture blending here, um, I the final detail I added in is this uh, sponge noise here. So I just want to edit some of, some of the noise, some extra detail for this uh, sponge stuff here. Uh, so I just use um, this noise with the cloud and to create something like that. I use the, uh, the histogram range. So from this basic shape, I blend uh, with the, um, the leather texture um, to have something like that. So you can see this noise value here. And then I blend um, this sponge noise to this node um, by having a mask from the. So basically, it's from this uh, the Renko shape here, and I just blend with the mask with the nail mask, and I invert that to create a mask for this blend. So it has something like this with the noise for the for the sponge. This is this is basically the height map uh, for this material. And then I just uh, edit into this uh, level here and chuck this straight in to the, uh, to the height output. And so let's have a look at this uh, ambient inclusion. Um, because I want to have control for each of these ambient inclusion value. Um, so, I so as you can see, I create ambient inclusion for uh, the Renko shape and the leather texture and the basic shape. So I just blend them all together um, by uh, playing around with this obesity for this multiply uh, and 
same here by having the control for this one you can sort of see how strong you want this damage to be All right and after that I just blend this with a bit of extra shading from here because um, basically ambient occlusion is all about create shading uh, for your texture and uh, sorry for your material and then just add this straight to this final ambient occlusion output um, and here uh, as, as I already mentioned so this is the basic shape and with this uh, leather texture and here's the, the blend and then this this I just add another normal node um, from this wrinkle shape here and I just blend I just use the, the normal combine and bring this straight into the normal map so I bring this straight into the normal output and so once I, I always like to uh, finish my normal texture before I move on to the roughness because with this uh, finished normal node I can create a, a curvature smooth which is I think per perfect for roughness uh, and then once I have that I just uh, add this blend um, from the nail and the leather texture so blend that together and again the reason why I'm doing it is just to play uh, around with the value for uh, for each part of this texture um, so I can see uh, in this in this 3d view I can sort of see um, how strong how shiny uh, or how um, metallic I want each part to be um, so basically this is the final um, roughness texture and and then I just add this straight in here and finally the last one is this uh, uh, color node so what I did is again um, by adding a lot of um, this gradient map here so I started by using this base shape and I invert that and I just uh, add this base green color here and from here uh, I just uh, so, so this is the the leather texture so this comes straight from here as you can see and here I just use the HSL node to change some of the color value uh, to create something like that because you don't want everything to look like pure green you want some bits to look a little bit um, uh, yellow or reddish and then I just add another um, texture from from this M, from this ambient inclusion so I just use this ambient inclusion and because I like all these little uh, leather details um, to be different so I just add which also it's nice to have um, extra colors to edit in just to create something more complicated and then I have added this color and this color and blend them all and with the the leather texture here so this is the final blend and then finally which is the uh, the nail color here so this is everything and bring this straight into the base color node um, yeah so this is all um, to build this material I've been using histogram skin and uh, histogram range all the time and I never really used this uh, non-uniform before uh, which I found is quite useful for this material yeah so this is um, everything for this video uh, thank you so much for watching and if you like it please uh, consider subscribe my channel and I will see you in the next one bye